Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 98 for October 17th, 2011. All the right notes. Buffalo. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 20% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW10. Ford. Featuring Wi-Fi connectivity with available sync and my Ford Touch. Now your car can be a Wi-Fi hotspot. Check it out on the new 2012 Ford Focus and learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. the Webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, joined, as always, by the inimitable co-host, the robot posing as a human being, the boy who thought he was a boy. It's just Robert Young. I was going to say the puppet who thought he was a boy, but you're a boy who thought he was a boy, Justin. I ain't got no strings to hold me down either way, Brian. Brian. <laughs> Welcome to the NSFW show, ladies and gentlemen. We come to you live and direct on a Monday night, and folks, the time is special. And so is the show. Folks, our guest is probably best known for the voice of Dr. Venture and the Venture Brothers, but he's a fantastic character actor. Besides, ladies and germs, James Urbaniak is here. Huzzah! Hello! Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I can't believe yes. that, uh, that, that you had nothing going on on a Monday night. Um, decided to, instead of drinking alone, you drink with us. Free Monday. <laughs> Free Monday. Here from the fridge. Uh, so, uh, okay, so real quick, uh, we originally tried to reach out to you to join us for our gigantic, uh, uh, what was it? Um, event at the Dragon Con. That's the one. Yeah, but I mean, you, had, you had an even bigger event. How did that go? I was doing, uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, my friend uh, Ken Plume, who uh, creates events there at the Dragon Con, had like a, a kind of quiz show, funny quiz show thing going on with a bunch of people. And uh, I had uh, committed to doing that. But thank you for asking me. Oh, no, here. dude. Uh, <laughs> that was my first time at Dragon way Con, to which start I really the show, enjoyed. <laughs> What's that? I, I like to always start off the show by saying, finally on is a guest we really respect. Why didn't you come on before, guests? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <That's... laughs> I was going to do I wanted to do it, but I had this other thing that I had already committed to. So Now, now was it this year? Originally, you weren't sure, I think, what night it was going to be. <laughs> just... Right. Stop What's laughing at me, Justin. So uh, when when I searched on YouTube, uh, one of the first things that pops up under your name is the uh, the you doing the spoken word version of Friday with Paul and Storm. Was that this year oh, at Dragon yeah. Con? What's that? Was that this year at Dragon? I guess it was because they didn't. That song wasn't out last that year at Dragon Con. That was in LA. Uh, the like the week that Friday broke. It was basically I think maybe like into week two. Friday had uh, been posted the week before. It was the height of the Friday thing. Yes, back and, back when. Uh, Paul Every day was Storm, Friday. Uh, you know, are this wonderful... Uh, do you know those guys? Oh, yeah, Remember? absolutely. In fact, we should really reach out to them to come on the show. So in we fact, can corner Paul them Sporin about how, why, how they weren't on our show. That's right. Paul we could ask Sporin them awkward. sent me an email a couple weeks ago 
saying, I never do this. I never send YouTube links. I'm not your aunt, but this is worth it. And it was the guy in the Buffalo uh, videos. Are you serious? Yes, you you, you, you got the, because that's who we have in studio tonight is the guy, the guy in the Buffalo. That's freaking awesome, dude. All right, Justin, let's go ahead and get started here. What do we got? What are we up to today? <laughs> well, uh, oh, but I, let me finish. So oh, wait, that, wait, the yes. thing was the, uh, we did the Friday thing. They asked me to just do a little walk on bit in this show they were doing at LA at Largo. And it was the height of the Friday thing. It was only the second week. And it seemed like it was a good idea to just come out and recite. They said, we want you to do dramatic reading, maybe something funny. And I didn't know what it would be. And I thought, well, maybe we should do Friday. And it seemed almost too easy, too obvious. But I thought, well, if we don't do it now, we'll never do it. Right. This is the only time to parody Friday is literally the week after Friday broke. Right. Yeah. And we did it. So and, Friday uh, it went like gangbusters. And somebody was in the audience with a video camera. And it, they put it on YouTube. And it got like thousands and thousands of hits and stuff. That's awesome. And now let me tell you something else. I have a friend who's a writer. Her name is Natasha Vargas Cooper, and she's a professional journalist, and she wrote a piece about Rebecca Black for New York Magazine, uh, and she went to interview her a few weeks ago, and she said to her, I have a friend named James. He's a big fan of yours. Could you sign this for me? So I have an actual autograph from Rebecca Black. Shut up! Which I scanned and put on my Tumblr, urbaniactumblr.com. Uh, and she wrote, James, thanks for all your support. And then she had like this big illegible signature. Blah, 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 blah. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like it was like a young person's idea of an adult signature. <laughs> Short people, they don't have illegible handwriting. They're past no. that. So I'm going to be like super crazy illegible. It's great. <laughs> all right. So, uh, uh, Justin, why don't you walk us through what we're up to this episode? Well, uh, we are going to really, really take this episode, which has already started off with uh, record level. By the way, if I can interrupt case. again, I'm sorry for interrupting when you did that thing before. Go on. Yes, no, good. That's keep going. It. You keep rocking the interruptions. You have unlimited interruption coupons as long as Justin's talking. I interrupted that segue because I wanted to finish the Rebecca Black thing, and we're past that now. Go on. Good, good. There we go. Uh, we're going to play a game, Brian. Yes. We're going to play a game that we never got around to naming, which is why <laughs> we're going to call it the lie game. Yes. Oh, we, we, and you, I forgot that you. it was so important to you that we named the freaking thing. I'm like, who cares what it's called? You're like, no, it has to have a name so that when other people rip it off, they'll be like, that's Brian and Justin's game. And it has a name. Well, no, no, no. I wanted a name. So literally right now, when we're saying what the, what the name of the game is, I could say a thing instead of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, explain, explain to people the game we cooked up. So here's the deal. Uh, we had, we had uh, uh, you know, listen, James, uh, you are obviously uh, a very well-spoken man and someone who is, uh, uh, you know, has many interesting friends and I'm sure goes to many classy dinner parties where conversation is exchanged. Would I be incorrect? Story of my life. <laughs> Here we go. So what we wanted to do is play uh, a little game where Brian shows random pictures for no it, reason. That's James Urbaniak on a buffalo, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Oh, look at him there on the buffalo. He's <laughs> an actor like the Venture Brothers. That's a good show. That's my imitation of it. That's, no, that's good. <laughs> Keep going, You Justin. guys on the podcast. Oh, he's wearing the cap. I like that. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's the deal. We are going to uh, each say something about a friend of ours. Okay. Yes. And it can we, it is the, the the choice of the person who is, is is saying it. It can either be actually a personal fact about us or a complete lie. No, 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 uh, not a complete lie. It, it it has to be a real story, but it has to either have happened to you or to a friend, and you have to claim it happened to a friend. We talked about this. You, well, okay. You tell the story as if it. As you say, I have a friend yes, no, no, who no, this yeah. happened to, and but but it but, doesn't have to be about a real friend. Okay. Does it? Well, it has. The story has to have happened. It either has to be a story that happened to a friend for reals. You tell the story as though it happened to a friend, but secretly it might actually be a story that happened to you. And that's the game: is you got to figure out is whether or not this really did happen to a friend, and you're telling the truth, or whether you're lying and right. really you're telling a story about yourself. The game is called Friend or Me. There you go, Friend or Me. Friend or Me. There you go. So. So All right. So, uh, for example, here I'll go first. I'll go first. 
All right. I got a, I got a friend. I got a friend. Chris Lyday is his name. And when, we, when he turned eight years old, he, uh, uh, me and Chris Lyday, were, uh, we were cutting up uh, c- uh, cocoons because we were cruel in children. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he went and got a fishing knife. And he uh, was, we started dropping the knife because it was interesting to see it go into the ground. And Chris yes. Lyday, he dropped it, and it went, like, in between his sock and his shin. And it actually, like, boom, like, sliced open his 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 uh, crutches and now er, er, I mean crutches he was on crutches afterwards because he had to get his stitches up together mm-hmm. and there was blood everywhere and uh, and he ha- he has a big old three inch scar to this very day. So the question is, did is did that really happen to my friend Chris Lyde or am I telling a story really about myself? Right. Wrapping it up as if it's as if it's about a friend, Justin. Can we? Is there a third option of boring? That's that's <laughs> valid too. That's totally valid. But the point is, is it illustrates the format of the freaking game, um, sir. I like the idea that it happened to you, but I believe it did happen to the friend. I'm going to go with friend. Justin? Uh, I'm going to say that it's it's got to happen to a friend for two reasons. Uh, number one, there's if it happened to yourself, you would forget it because it is so banal and stupid. No, so it had no, to happen I to disagree. somebody else that you could say, oh, that was that thing that happened to the other guy. So it's the other guy. I tried to, I want you to know the whole time you bastards were talking, I was trying to get my foot up there so you could see the scar. You can't see the it scar. It was you. It was me. There it is. There's the Fantastic. scar, right? Well done. Okay, so now, now, Mr. Justin Robert Rubles, you, you one up me. Let's hear, let's hear a real story, sir. Well, see, I had all these really entertaining lies that I had written down. <laughs> now I have to think of things. Because apparently Brian has Next decided time, that he's the fan of the parent of truth. For the game. Uh, yes. A meeting where you discuss what the game is so you both understand. That's, uh, you know what? That's, uh, uh, that's a new thing, new thing on the docket, Justin. We'll have a meeting and decide what the game is. Yeah. You get, you more, see, here's the other thing, Justin. More. You could have told a freaking lie and none of us would have ever known. Why did you? Why did you just out the fact that you only had a lies set up? Because now I want to get on you because you made a big deal about how lies didn't uh, couldn't exist on the show. Well, okay, I didn't say that necessarily. Look, you know, it's interesting because uh, the uh, the quiz show that I did, that my friend Ken Plume uh, organized at the Dragon Con, that uh, precluded me from doing your show, was similar to this game. Wait a minute. Oh, I'll be. And the concept is that, but it's a little different. The idea is that um, uh, Ken asks everyone in the game to send him uh, a fact about themselves. And then during the game, he'll give you an envelope. And it will either be the true fact about yourself. There's like a panel of people, right? So there's like five people on stage. So you get an envelope, and it either has your fact, which is a truth about you, or it has a lie that Ken made up about you. And you read it, and then people ask you questions about it, and then they decide whether or not it's true or a lie. But the point is, if it's a lie, you haven't seen the lie before, so you have to immediately bull. So you have to sell it the whole way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then no, the facts no, actually, are like James, weird the, the so real point is, is that weird. Ken Plume so is be way fake. better at making games up than us. <laughs> yeah, it's a better game. I got to admit. <laughs> It's really that's, fun. That's the actual fact that we've all uh, come to learn. It reminds me, uh, James and Brian, of this one time uh, my friend, uh, my friend uh, decided that he. Um, what's, what's your friend's name? Uh, my friend's name is Consuelo. <laughs> Did you say Consuelo with an M? Uh, Consuelo. Uh, okay. Brian, don't be you didn't go. Uh, so anyway, my friend. Um, <laughs> yes. That's sad. Yeah. My friend, my friend Consuelo. Tell. So what happened is, uh, he decided that he was going to um, pull a uh, insurance scam <laughs> and push his car into a lake, so he could call it in uh, and and uh, claim it as uh, stolen. And uh, so he went and he uh, he, uh, he pushed the the full car. He put it in in, uh, in in neutral and slowly pushed it into this man-made lake in uh, Plantation, Florida, uh, and then uh, woke up the next day, had a change of heart, and immediately uh, told his parents because he couldn't keep up with the lie of lying to the insurance company collecting the money. 
I, I this is so obviously not you that part of me wants to believe this is you <laughs> because <laughs> because like just the, it would totally shatter the foundation of our relationship if I knew that you had actually pushed a car into a lake. I want to believe that this uh, is not well, your it friend. Would be, it would be my car, and 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 ultimately it is my friend Consuelo did uh, have a change of heart. You know, he 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 did decide that that thieving the insurance company wasn't the right way to do and 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 bit the bullet. So, uh, you know, he's not the worst guy in the world, I just want to point out. I, I want to think this is you. I don't think this is your friend at all. I think this is you. James? Uh, there was a little, uh, there's a little psychological uh, thing going on where you're sort of describing what Consuelo thought, which I guess <laughs> he's a friend of yours, so you would know this, but the I'm going to go with you, time, too. James. You did it! <laughs> <laughs> Justin, um, unfortunately, uh, I did. I did not. Uh, ah, I'm sucking at this but game. This is awful. I, I will say that if uh, somebody does want to get on their scuba gear, I could point out a man-made lake in Plantation, Florida, that has the wreckage of a car pushed into it. Oh, so oh, so this really did happen to a friend. This is a true story that really did happen to a friend. That's the game. I know, no, I know. But, I made up a lie. But that's just a joke. It's so much better knowing that it really happened. All right, Guys, James. you don't switch games midway. Of course, that was, okay. you know, we're still playing friend or me. That's right, that's right. Now, okay, what do you got for us, James? You got... <laughs> okay, I, um, uh, I'm an actor, and I once got a phone, uh, I, this is a few years ago, and I got a call from a guy and he uh, he was one of the jerky boys and the jerky boy uh, was making a movie and he wanted me to be in the film and uh, we ended up having regular phone conversations about this film non-prank conversations yeah. on the phone did he insist on like uh, using stereotypical New York accents just for grinsies even though it's not a prank he did have a little bit of a New York accent but he uh, uh, and we had a sort of regular phone dialogue for like a year, and then nothing really happened. But that, that's my story, that I had a year-long telephone relationship with one of the jerky boys. Was that me, or was that a friend of mine? I'm going to say that's a friend uh, this of yours. Is, this is several years ago. This is almost like pre-Venture Brothers, I may add. Uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely say that's someone else. Justin? Can I ask you a question? I mean, what did... How like, the movie obviously was it the movie that came out or was it after that? No, that it was sort movie? of after the height of the Jerky Boys fame. It was after the Jerky Boys movie. Yeah, so they were looking for a, a sequel, and you were going to be a, a part of, or yeah, theoretically it you were going to be. It wasn't a Jerky Boys theme film. It was this one of the Jerky Boys was making his own movie. His own movie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, the team had broken up. Ah, and we all remember that day. The the the. The day the was, prank call hung up. It was we the 9 11 of our time. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Sizzle Chest, I think this one's you. <laughs> it was me. It actually happened. Yay! Uh, right, <laughs> so that's, one. that's one for it was Justin. It's a very weird thing. Just on every like few months, I, I would get a phone call and talk to uh, one of the jerky boys. He was a very nice guy. And he, he actually wanted to make his – he had made a feature, which didn't come out, but he had sent me it. And it was uh, about these guys in prison, and it was just this like serious sort of existential film. He, he and he really was a, a thoughtful cat, and he he just like he spoke very. He had complicated feelings about the whole Jerky Boys thing. How, <laughs> how do you, how does one have complicated feelings about the Jerky Boys? Like what, what? He had issues with his partner. He had issues with the other Jerky Boy. There's it's a whole. It, I like I got this whole Jerky Boys behind the laughter. <laughs> VH1 special. That was my own private special. That's awesome, it though. It was, it was fantastic. Wait, was I'm, I'm dying to know, though. Like, what was the movie he wanted to make with you? <laughs> the movie he wanted to make with me was a kind of uh, weird supernatural western. Like with cowboys really? and aliens? Yeah, cowboys and, like, the devil and, and stuff like that. And I'm making fun of it. Like, he was a very creative person. He, he was a smart guy. It was, it was really interesting. And I, I would have probably done it, but it kind of fell apart like many low-budget things do. But that, and that was part of it. Like he, he, he was actually a, he was an artistic guy, and he wanted to make more interesting things. But it was sort of like, oh well, I'm the jerky boy. 
you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to take me seriously, you know? <laughs> All right. And yet here uh, we are, so... <laughs> joking about the yeah, fact that no, the jerky boy wanted to, wanted to make the I Western movie. If he's on the Twitter or something. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have this friend of mine who insists that he has a partially unraveled testicle. He says it totally works. He, uh, he even has kids, so apparently so. But apparently one of them feels uh, like if you were to feel it, feels only partially all together. It's sort of sort of like... Um, he had the, the thing that was discussed on the Venture Brothers, the testicle thing? No, oh, no, no. He did not have t testicular torsion. Yes. No, no, but like, like apparently everything's healthy, but like if you feel it, like one, you're like, well, that guy's all the way around. And then the other Are guy's like still playing the game. <laughs> it, 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 well, this is just a friend of mine. This is a friend of mine. Yeah, his name is um, Manuel. <laughs> Manuel has a, uh, a, a partially unraveled testicle. When this, when this part is over, don't put your testicles up on the table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to second that one from our guest. Yeah. Uh, Brian, have you felt your friend's nuts? Uh, I, I have not. I have not. He, but he's described it in detail because I was fascinated by this. I was trying to figure out no, whether I, or not yeah, it was possible. We're still playing the game, so I missed the segue, but it makes perfect sense now. If this is the game uh, that I'm going to go again with friend, so I don't think you, you're going to share that. Okay. Justin? <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> that one of Brian's nuts is unraveled like the spent end of a party popper. All right, and, and uh, let me ask the chat room. What does chat room think? They they're they're naming like specific names of who of who they think it is. Uh, hey, so wait, friends. did you really put up the chat room just so people could see that uh, people in the chat room were saying OMG Chad and no doctor? No, well, I just want to see what they think. They say uh, about about half say uh, friend. Most of them say friend. It's not a friend, bro. It's this oh, guy wow. right you here. Got a scar on your ankle and you got twisted balls. That's right. That's true. I'm partially that's why your unraveled. Hair is partially like that. unraveled. We're learning a lot about you, <laughs> Justin. They're freaking out. They don't. Uh, that's a bit much. This is a very confessional episode of the Not Safe for Work show. Well, it's this is this. Is, when, when you don't have when you don't have the stories, you go for like, what is the most awkward thing that's I can right. confess about well, myself? Well, we've also learned that you actually have no friends. That's right. <laughs> you have a scar on your leg. You got half a uh, and, uh, unraveled testicle, and uh, and I got like Justin. No well, you should try having a conversation with this guy, James. <laughs> you know, it's just you know you're you're like, oh, hey, so um, I think I'm I'm gonna uh, propose to my girlfriend. He's like, oh, that's really cool. Did I ever tell you about my unraveled nut? Because it is crazy. <laughs> it's almost as crazy as that time I sliced my leg open. Want to see the scar? <laughs> all right, wait, 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 what do you got? What do you got? It's all um, coming out tonight. <clears throat> All right, Brian, I got this friend. Um, and he has an unraveled nut. <laughs> Perfect. And? No, all right. Uh, how about this? Um, one time, um, I got this friend. His name is Sean. We were, uh, we were in college at the time. We were playing the Star Wars, the first Star Wars game that came out for GameCube. Uh, if that if that dates my collegiate experience any, and uh, we were smoking pot. <laughs> wow! All right, all right. Uh, so I'm with him. I'm smoking pot. He's playing. Uh, uh, he's actually blowing up the Death Star in the game, and all of a sudden he uh, he wins, and he immediately has the horrified realization that he's uh, peed on himself. <laughs> He was so focused playing the game, uh, he had he had turned off all of his instrumentation, not unlike Luke Skywalker, and used the Force. Unfortunately, that Force was on his gallbladder, and it uh, spread all throughout his genes. Uh, he then made his way wow. to the dorm bathroom, and uh, and and cleaned up. So uh, was that was that Sean uh, Brucher <laughs> of West Mifflin, Pennsylvania? <laughs> Or uh, Justin Robert Young, born of Fort Worth, Texas, uh, now in Davie, Florida. Were you born in Fort Worth? I was. I didn't know that. I did, you're a Texan. All right. I'm going to let James go first because I know. I've, I'm certain I know the answer on this one. Uh, well, I'll say it was you because you, I just 
because it, the show has taken a confessional mode. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna You're say generously confessing something. Uh, I'm I'm on board that for the same reason for the same reason I'm sure you're actually telling the truth, and that it's that it's you I guess a lie it was not your friend it's you, yes Justin um that is actually a lie it was not me it was actually no it was me but I wasn't playing <laughs> it was I was watching him play <laughs> so you did you really you really did piss I yourself? did I was so in, I was so engrossed in it that I wound up peeing myself and and uh and boy howdy was that a realization when you, when you realize <laughs> that you're in the zone and the zone comes with its own uh its own little uh, party favors All right. <laughs> All right, nice. how did it so did, did did they bust you on it or you just sort of squirreled out and nobody saw no it was just me and my friend he didn't even really notice I I just uh just kind of left <laughs> All right, James, one more. We got one more from you. All right, one more. So uh, I have a friend. <laughs> um, and I'm actually going to – this is my, the story about the friend, but I'm going to give him a fake name just to uh, protect him. So we'll say his name sure. is Fred, but this is a friend. So Fred is uh, living in an apartment in New York with his significant other, and they're doing some work on the apartment. And – they find in like a crevice in the apartment a little baggy type thing and in the baggy is some white powder well and no. it's clear that this is drugs that were stored in the wall by the prior owner of the apartment and fred and his significant other take the drugs <gasps> not not and knowing like, what it is not knowing what it is well, like, like take as in take into their person, ingest, or take as in yes, induce the uh, drugs. And uh, did uh, did 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 your Fred uh, or whoever whatever made up name you just gave <laughs> did did that person? They were fine. Okay, they did... were young and crazy, and they were in New York, and they you do crazy shit, and and they but they were fine. Did did they describe the experience? And like, did they was that the game? Is like, guess what we're on? Well, no, it was just it was just the two of them. There was no one else present. The story was told later okay but, sure. but 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 they didn't okay all right were they um, playing star wars <laughs> <laughs> no this is pre video games i think <laughs> oh man i'm i'm going to uh justin what do you say uh oh gee i mean i'm i'm going to go ahead and, and aspirationally cast my vote for it being actually james if if just <laughs> so somebody has something to add to his wikipedia <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that's the reasoning I'm going to say that it's probably not James, because of all the venues to come out with something like that, I would be very flattered if it was here on NSFW show. Uh, uh, it was, in fact, a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that Fred. Uh, that Wiley Fred. I, I have no idea who won, but I'm pretty sure we all lost on this game. <laughs> <laughs> there were no winners here tonight. <laughs> The way, I'm including the audience. It's just, just me and Brian. Me and I are like, hey, everybody's skinny dipping, right? And then it's just me and him. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the, the two of us with our pants around our ankles like, come on, we're going streaking. No. Uh, hey, man, so uh, uh, who's paying for this episode? Uh, Brian, listen, um, we have our good friends at the Ford Motor Company. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, uh, I thought you were going to – this is a new sponsor. We got a new sponsor. Indeed we do, Brian. Uh, you know, have you ever been driving around in your car? Never. And you're like, you know it would be great if this car were a Wi-Fi hotspot? Uh, that's not a real product. Tell me that's a real product. Uh, well, number one, can you answer the goddamn question <laughs> and say whether or not you wish that that happened? Uh, yes. No. Look, I mean, that's like saying, uh, uh, do I wish uh, my entire house could be made of chocolate? Yes, of course. I'd want my car to be made of Wi-Fi. Well, then you need to run out right now, uh, take your car, push it into a lake, and buy <laughs> a 2012 Ford Focus. Shut up. The Ford Focus is a Wi-Fi hotspot? Brian, here's how it works. Number one, establish an internet connection to the Wi-Fi hotspot by plugging in a portable wireless access card into a USB port located in the center armrest console. Or if you have a BlackBerry, you can connect to the hotspot wirelessly via Bluetooth. Next, connect up to five Wi-Fi enabled devices to the hotspot using a secure password. So you can, you know, your Android phones, your iPhones, your laptops, you can bring an Xbox in there. Doesn't goddamn matter. 
Run them all in your so, Ford Focus do, do, 2012 style. Is there is there like a subscribe? There's got to be a subscription, right? What's what you you got to pay? Take your subscriptions and shoot them in the back of a dirty alley. No way. Okay. That's not possible. Yeah, you just all you have to do. You have to have an subscription for your for your wireless access card, or if you have a a blue or a BlackBerry phone, obviously you got to pay for the data plan. But beyond that, you're partying, baby, Wi-Fi style in the Ford Focus. All right, what website can we send people over to? Uh, Brian, you are going to keep talking while I find a website. <laughs> then you're going to shut up because I can tell you Ford.com slash technology is going to tell you all about this and you're going to head on down to your local Ford dealership. I want you to grab that salesman by his collar and scream in his face at the top of your lungs, give me the car that makes of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Did you say makes of the Wi-Fi? Did you just do like yes. a stereotypical? Yes, and then flip a pizza. Because <laughs> you are, in fact, an Italian stereotype who deserves this vehicle. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, let's do this. Uh, first of all, Ford.com uh, slash technology. Thank you so much to the Ford Motor Company and their awesome Wi-Fi for looting cars, um, which I'm going to have to learn more about. That sounds awesome. But uh, here's what we did before the show, James. We asked the chat room, what TV shows, past, present, or future, could be made better with a little more James Urbaniak, right? And they put together some comps. They threw together some ideas here. Uh, we just want kind of a, a go, no go. Would you accept the role? Is this something that'd be like, yes, I do want to. This would be good for the show. This would be good for James or no. And, and but if you say no, we got to have a reason why, you know, just kind of think it through. Make sense. All right. All right. So first off, uh, I didn't even know. I guess uh, we probably should describe because for the audio listeners, but uh, I think this one sort of sort of speaks for itself. I don't think that we should have any reaction at all to anything. We should just just completely look at these in silence and, and nod. Or shake our heads to each other. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, right here. Go. You like it or you down with it? Wait, I have to look at the thing. Yeah, well, uh, let me, let me, let me describe. Is. This is a, a David Tennant-era Doctor Who picture with Rose Tyler in the background. And, and right, who's and that peeking out. his head around uh, sly style Who. behind I the TARDIS? Why, it's your Dr. friend Who. and mine, I'm James Urbaniak. Wait, wait, did I hear in, I'm sorry, Justin was talking, but it sounded to me shockingly like you said you never watched Doctor Who. I've never seen a Doctor Who in my life. I'm, I'm sorry, say that again slowly. Brian, can you, can you please explain, explain Doctor Who to, to James? What is, what is the show about? Uh, it's about a time-traveling time lord who travels through time. It sounds like a good show for me. And I could see myself playing the uh, mysterious man uh, behind the phone booth. The creeper behind the phone booth is... The creeper behind the phone booth. <laughs> that's how we're going to make it better. We're going to add, at the end of each episode, like this current recurring theme, like, uh, what's he up to back there? The creeper behind the phone booth? This is, so yeah, you're you're thinking of him as a like big bat. Like science right. fiction and fantasy shows. I'm, I got a confession to make. I'm not a fanboy. I have nothing against that stuff, but... I don't know a lot of that material. Okay, Most so, of the jokes in the Venture Brothers had to be explained to me. Uh, wow. So you're saying you're saying Venture Brothers uh, in general has a lot of references that, that aren't, aren't your bag. Well, the boys, uh, Doc and Jackson, uh, yeah, they just, they're, they're, they're obsessed with a lot of stuff that I'm not obsessed with, which is not obscure stuff. It's just that, like, Doctor Who isn't obscure. I just, I've never watched it. So, it's so true. is that a uh, th is that a you would take it or you would not? Take I would it? take it. I would take it. it okay. Cool. Done. Done yeah. and done. Uh, okay. Well, are, here, Brian, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you. This. Well, what kind of role would you see James playing? Oh, the creeper what behind the phone booth. Like, yeah, no, like like he would go yeah. for like uh, you you would have this vague notion that maybe he's he's up he's up to abusing himself behind the uh, the TARDIS all the time. But then yeah, like right. like third third season in, it's like this running gag. Third season in, it turns out he's he finally gets the cork off the champagne and and sprays it in the face of the alien who gets all mad and he saves the day at the end. That's the way I would write it. That you would cast James as a three year running jerk off gag. Yes, but but that pays off big time when he saves the doctor and, and when Rose. he sprays a bottle of champagne. That's right, because you thought he was champagne. abusing himself, but it turns out he was just trying to get the cork off the champagne. What well, why yeah, what would you God. do? What would you do, uh, Justin? No, that, that sounds like the best idea. That <laughs> okay, I've ever all right. Heard. All right, fine. Off. All right, uh, from the from the, the 1980s sitcom era, uh, James Urbaniak as... as uh, ah, this show I know. This... <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Is that... Uh, uh, I think that's you as Tootie, if I'm not mistaken, in the Facts of Life. The black girl. 
uh, next to the chubby girl. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy Cohn, the actress Mindy Cohn. Mindy Cohn, who does the voice of Velma now on the new Scooby Doo episodes. Uh, would you would you take that role? <laughs> yeah, I, that would definitely be a challenge to play a uh, a. Uh, a prepubescent uh, African American. <laughs> uh, talking about prepubescent, uh, Wonder Years. Any interest? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> these are. Can you email me all of these? <laughs> I will. I will no give you worry. all of these. We'll, we'll, we'll send them all to you. Uh, again, uh, I I think I saw that a couple of times. Never really paid a lot of attention to the Wonder Years. Okay. Um, well, but, let, let's see. Let's see. Brian is Kevin Arnold. Is it not? It is indeed Kevin Arnold. Uh, Brian, what, 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 what um, could you say? Uh, what kind of life sense. lesson do you think that James would help uh, a young Kevin learn on on uh, the Wonder Years? Uh, I think Kevin would start to get into uh, Doctor Who, and James would tell him that there's way better things to to get involved with. Is is what I think. Yeah, like I'd a potential like friendship a with one of the Jerky Boys. Teacher yes. Who uh, is kind of a a sad guy? He's divorced and he's kind of lonely, and he by imparting his own point of view. He, he loves jazz. I think his teacher, he loves jazz. <laughs> and just by sort of, and that Kevin's receptive to this. And then the guy becomes, the teacher becomes sort of a better person because he's been able to connect with this kid. There we That's go. Character. His name is, yes, his name is Mr. F you know, Mr. Fielding or something. Uh, okay. <laughs> now this one. Exactly. This one. Jazz enthusiast Mr. Fielding. Yeah, Mr. Fielding. This one, uh, this one may... Uh, by the way, that episode's called All the Right Notes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, now, this one may uh, may test your mettle as an actor. You're going to have to kind of step outside. Your, I mean, as far as I know, maybe you maybe you had a role like this before, but would you go back and be Ooh, one of the Baywatch babes? Oh, I look like Sarah Palin. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to pass on the babes of Baywatch. Mm, all right. I'm going to pass on being a Baywatch That's too babe, bad because we had this whole... I don't want to get pigeonholed as, a, as you know, just like a, a cheesecake kind of bimbo. Uh, fair enough. Sure. Fair enough. Okay, so that's a pass. So we don't have to write anything for that one, no. Justin. Uh, my secret identity. Let's see this. Oh, wow. Now, what is this show? Oh, you don't remember my secret identity? I have never. I have no it's idea what show. this show is. Either. That's the. That's the one. Uh, uh, who? Who was? Who was the? The. the uh, uh, Jerry. Jerry O'Connell is that his name? But uh, that was his. That was his breakout show. It was like a budget. Uh, a budget uh, superhero show in the early '90s. Yeah, Jerry O'Connell. They're. Oh man, everyone's freaking out at us. They. Let's just keep on moving. So we'll say no to that one. That. I like that Photoshop one though. That was a nice one. Um. Like okay. <laughs> Would you ever? Go on the Super Bowl and uh, maybe rip oh, and off. Have a uh, wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, no, or induce a yeah. wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, Would this, you... this yeah. is James uh, like dressed that. shockingly like a circa 2002 <laughs> Justin Timberlake <laughs> and a uh, a, a boob clutching photos. Janet Jackson in one of the most famous moments in pop culture history. <laughs> and then and then uh, yeah and and sing a song. And then rip off some uh, clothes. Where the lyrics and the timing of the final moment clearly indicate that it's we're trying to create a sort of sensational moment. Yes. Where we were impressed with the pasting that it's all clearly deliberate and timed and thematically appropriate. Trying to create yes. the equivalent of Britney Madonna kiss or whatever, a sort of sensational thing. Right. And then when the blowback is so severe we then backpedal ludicrously. Yes. Say, oh, no, yes. that was a mistake. Yes. It, it, even though it was perfectly timed to a lighting cue and was related to the lyrics. When yeah. I, yes, the, 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 yeah, the, the lyric like, at the end of the song being, I'll have you naked by the end of this song. And then <laughs> Janet, of dream. course, sure. becoming naked at yeah. the end of the song. Oh, no, no, that was just a coincidence. Yeah. Everything went horribly wrong. So so would you, you yeah. that's a yes you would do that or a yes, no? Yes, I would love to lie to the nation brazenly. It's <laughs> <laughs> not, not true. Well, and yeah. the good the good news now is like it, it, the way the people remember it is it's not even like Justin Timberlake was there. You know, you wouldn't really have to take any of the heat. You would just kind of skate on that. Everybody gets pissed at Janet Jackson when sure. she was not the I one ripping her boobs. It's true, yeah. Blame the woman. <laughs> All right. In the Bible. Uh, Still I, do it to get the Super Bowl. I, I don't know if you're watching this one, but would you go back <laughs> and be in Breaking Bad as yeah. as Walter Robert, White? Uh, it looks like. That's me as Robert Crumb in American Splendor. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
that's that's what that image is. Uh, yeah, that would put a whole different uh, twist on the. Uh... Yeah, I like it. I okay. like Rob Crumb as uh, the star of Breaking Bad. That's done and one. done. All yes. right, so we'll, we'll we'll get on that right away. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find. Uh... Uh, wow, this one, I don't know. Would you go back and play Robin in, uh, oh, <laughs> in nice. the original me... Batman and Robin? That's a very subtle Photoshop right there. Uh, this is, this is uh, of course, the Adam West uh, Batman, uh, and, and then James is playing uh, playing Robin. So is sure. there anything that you would add to the Robin role, James? Yeah, I think he'd have a kind of wry uh, quality. He'd be a little more uh, sort of sarcastic than... Uh, the Robin of the series. Uh, he'd probably love jazz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through. I'm trying to find one more because we're almost out of time. And what I like about this one is what a lazy Photoshop it is. It's just your, the best. It's just your face on the Max Headroom box art. Oh, uh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's the image me of me that was. <clears throat> oh, and there's a woman. <clears throat> that image was taken at the Sundance Film Festival. A couple of. Uh, <laughs> Um, sure. Did you did you ever watch the original Max, Max Headroom show back I, in the day? No, I don't remember. That was I was a young person when that was on, and I remember it when it was on. I think I kind of paid vague attention to it. But I, you know, I actually have kind of a square head, so I would be a good choice for that role. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, we got one last one, and this is this oh. is the roles of a lifetime. This would be you playing multiple roles. You say you probably probably have to do some CG wizardry. Would you go back and play all of the Power Rangers? Oh, nice. I definitely would because my son, who is five years old, has recently discovered the Power Rangers. And uh, that would be a good way to uh, connect with my boy if uh, dad <laughs> could feel the Power now, Rangers. Now, it would be a big departure for Power all Rangers the Power Rangers to be played by one person. <laughs> <laughs> so you would you would go back in time. You would appear as the Power Rangers just yeah. so that you could have more sway with your five year old son. Power Ranger says, "Get your father a beer." <laughs> <laughs> that's how they talked on that, right? It was always I'm Power Rangers. Really sure. Well, no, in your version, that's it. They just all and none of them have any different the inflection. They're just like, I mean, "We need to go it. save the princess." <laughs> oh, I think that's a good idea. Exactly. Power Ranger says, let's go all fight them together. I can't make it, guys. I'm getting my daddy a beer. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's the winner. That was a great one to end on. Uh, so okay, so yeah, no, this is the winner. All right, so congratulations to whoever. Uh, <laughs> chat room was going nuts with that. That does need to be. I will give you uh, $3 if you make that your Twitter avatar for any amount of time. That's pretty nice. Uh, okay, uh, look, we, we got we got to pay one more bill, and then we got our big, big old music guest. Justin, what do we got? Oh, how exciting. Uh, uh, Brian, um, you, uh, if you're not on Squarespace, I've lost all respect for you. It's gotten to that point. All right? I totally got up and left because I was calling our uh, music guests, telling them they could start setting up in the back. What did you say? Were you talking about Squarespace? Because you know I love Squarespace. If anybody who's listening to this isn't on Squarespace, and dies in the next 24 hours, I'm gonna personally spit on your grave. Wait, what does that even mean? That's how amazing Squarespace is. Now it's you're wasting your life if you don't get on it immediately, okay? I feel very, very, uh, you know, okay, this I, is I the feel... most, this is the worst idea you've ever had, Justin, because somebody's gonna get in a car wreck and you and they're gonna play this. They're gonna play this quote of you saying you'll spit on the grave if they're not on Squarespace. Yeah, no, and you wanna know what? I'm gonna find out where they are and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say into my phone, Siri, book me a flight so I can spit on this guy's grave. And then it's going to go, bing, bing, checking my sources. You are flying in five minutes. Run to the airport. I'm going to go there, fly to the, to the thing, and then as the funeral's kind of wrapping up, I'm going to give my condolences to the family. I really think it's a terrible loss. It's, all, it's a terrible tragedy. And then... Tactfully spit on the grave. <laughs> you because can't tactfully you know what, It's spit not on about the act. It's not about the act. It's about the waste of Squarespace's resources that could have made this person's last 24 hours on Earth that much better. Okay. Uh, number one, you can make a website so easy. It's a so easy. One might say. Uh, you don't even know CSS. You ain't got to be one of those fancy CSS wizards, okay? Let's say you want to make a website about how much you like jazz and you're teaching Kevin Arnold the finer points of how to be a man and sticking up for yourself. 
you can go to ilikejazz.squarespace.com. Set that site up right now. And, uh, and you know, it just, it's, it's not even, a, it's a snap to make, and they look beautiful. The regular templates are just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and, and you want to know what? The entire account, you can get 20% off for six months if you just use uh, NSFW10 at checkout. Or if you go to squarespace.com slash NSFW, they'll know you came from this site. Now, a lot of you people might be thinking, hey, I ain't got the scratch right now. You want to know what? Shut up. Shut your face right now if that's what you're thinking. Because you can go set up a site for free, no credit card needed, for two weeks. And just try it out. Man, put on those pajama bottoms and walk around. That's all you need to do is get a, get a sense of the feel, baby. And, and I guarantee you're going to like it. And when you do have a little money in your pocket, you can take your credit card and you can go get a, a website. 20% off for six months. That's what you need. Squarespace.com. If you don't use it and you die, I'll think less of your corpse. Wink. <laughs> we'll put that on the box art. Uh, hey, uh, we've got a very, very special guest right here in Austin, Texas, creator of the fantastic Guy in a Buffalo series, which you saw at the beginning of this episode. You got to go check out all four videos. Are there four videos? Yeah, all right, hold on. Let me get you guys audio set up here. Boom. Just like that. There we go. It's the Possum Posse. Everyone hey. make digital applause for the Possum Posse. Woo! Oh, yes. Woo! Sounds so real. Sounds so real. So, it feels real. <laughs> it feels real. So, so you guys, uh, <laughs> did you say it feels like a normal show? Uh, you guys are normally what a five piece group? Yes, normal. and uh, and right here in Austin, right? Correct. Yeah, we're from here. Uh, and before you begin, uh, where did the idea? Who who is the genius behind Guy on a Buffalo? I'll just go ahead and say that was me. It was all me, Jomo. And uh, and Jomo, where did it come from? Uh well, I did a video for one of our songs. We recorded four uh, songs for kind of a you know, a studio EP, and I did a video of one of them uh, set to kind of an old public domain cartoon that I sliced up because I can't afford real video. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to do it again, and I found this video that uh, it was just so ridiculous I had to do something with it because it was so bad. And I um, went to my wife, and I said, what song is this possibly going to fit with? Uh, you know, and she said, none of your songs are going to fit with that piece of ridiculousness. You need to write a new song for it. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so I just, she works those days. She works on Saturdays and I don't. So I just locked myself in my uh, office and did it for, you know, eight hours or so. Awesome. But you so, can tell the quality of work. <laughs> so so you did all four of them like in a row or no. you did one and then you did the next? Well, and... I cut it down. I was trying to cut it down to just one song and I got to 10 minutes and it was still too much awesomeness. And I was, I was like, I've. I'm going to get, you know, I'm, I can't have a 10 minute song. No one will watch it. And so yeah, you had to spread that out like peanut yeah. butter on bread, man. Yeah. I said, I'm going to milk it. I'm going to milk it as long go. as I can keep it going. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to milk its tiny nipples, apparently. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you did demonstrate some tiny nipples there. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. Those are buffalo you know, nipples. Got... They're called teats on buffaloes, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, what are you guys playing for us today? Uh, we're going to play a song uh, called Assumptions. It's about assuming things. All right, take it away, possum posse. If you please, can you? Can everyone? Can you hear all of our? Yeah, instruments? I think so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Assume for a moment, if you will. You're a dinosaur Chewing on a piece of flesh Probably from some other dinosaur When all of a sudden This mammal comes along Starts chewing on your piece of flesh Like he was the one that killed it Not cool, mammal How would you feel about that? Assume for a moment, if you will that the little dinosaur that's you started crying Will the tears of that little dinosaur be enough to fill up all the craters? Assuming for a moment that there were craters on earth during the time of dinosaurs which I'm not too sure that there weren't frankly How would you feel? Well maybe you don't have to think about it Maybe that's not your problem Maybe you'll never have to worry 
about that. Ah, but some of us do. Some of us do. Some of us do. Some of us do. Yeah, some of us do. Assume for a moment, if you will, you're a small Vietnamese boy. <laughs> Traveling to Africa during the 14th century BC. Mm. When you're accosted by a tribe of natives who don't recognize the way you look, and they put you on trial for being a demigod. <laughs> Assuming for a moment that that tribe of natives believes in demigods. Assume for a moment, if you will, that they strip you of your clothing and they strip you of your dignity and they strip you of almost everything else that they could possibly strip you of, which is a lot of stuff. Well, maybe you don't have to think about it. Maybe that's not your problem. Maybe you'll never have to worry about that. Yeah, some of us do. Some of us do. Some of us really do. Assume for a moment, if you will, and I'm quite certain that you will. You just murdered your entire family. Not really because they didn't deserve it, but more like I'm, I'm convinced that they deserved it. It's debatable. Anyway, the point is, you go downtown and you buy a guitar And you write a song about assuming ridiculous things and imagining ridiculous things That way, you can talk about murdering your entire family in public and no one will know that it's real That I'll think it's just something that you made up to be part of a ridiculous song How would you feel? Assume for a moment, if you will, that you accidentally wrote a verse to the song where you explained the origin of the song, which was to cover up the murder of your entire family, and you accidentally sang it on a live stream. <laughs> and your band members were giving you the eye, like, don't keep singing it, but you for some reason did. How would you feel? Well, maybe you don't have to think about it. Maybe that's not your problem. Maybe you'll never have to worry about it. Not me personally. I guess, uh, I guess it would be like uh, them do, some of them do, some of them do, some of them do, some of them do. Thanks, that's a Celine Dion song. <laughs> Woo! Uh, dude, that was freaking epic. Hold on, let me say, change this other camera over on you guys right here. Uh, look, so you guys have a Kickstarter right now, right? Where can people go? Uh, they can go to the possumposse.com slash forward slash Kickstarter. All right. Yes. And they can, uh, also, they can also go to Kickstarter and search for the Possum Posse, but we the direct links is a little easier. So you guys right now, I'm looking at it right now. It is it's, sad. It's, yeah, it's really pathetic. Is it very sad? You want to take a quick look at it here? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it's, it's not... Uh... Yeah, it's really sad. It is sad. Every day... An average of three to four people listen to the Possum Posse, but for countless others, listening to the Posse is simply not a reality. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin, enthusiast, Lincoln Edwards. <laughs> Uh, no, look, I love the stuff you guys are doing. Uh, and uh, so how much uh, you guys need? How much money to do what? Well, we need $12,000 to make an actual studio recording, and that includes... Uh, you know, mas mixing, mastering, and also promoting it. So we try to go with a realistic number. Uh, we've got awesome facilities here in Austin that we can, you know, make it happen. And, uh, and we're also going to then kick in. Uh, we've been selling some T-shirts. You know, we've sold some uh, guy on a buffalo T-shirts and uh, some possum posse T-shirts that uh, have helped, you know, helped us uh, get a little bit of funding to, to hopefully contribute to it. So the goal is to make a real... I was telling you earlier, you know, we, 
used to record on this little plastic microphone, and we would all lean in and uh, try to get the mix just perfect, uh, which obviously never happened. Uh, and so, we're you know, that's the goal is to go into a real studio and make a real album. And uh, so, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, okay, well, look, I guess I guess we're we're about to hit hit our time. Uh, uh, Justin, is there anything we want to plug before we wrap up? I, or can we? I don't know if we can get one more song out of you guys. Me. Yeah, well, I mean, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be horrible if we couldn't get another song if, if they're ready to play one. But I do want to uh, say for everybody who's listening, uh, K S, or is it yeah, KCK dot ST slash NSFW Possum will bring you right to the Possum Posse's page. Please oh, awesome. do me a favor, throw him a couple ducats for being so awesome and actually coming into Brian's house and playing uh, playing a song right next to his daughter's room while she's trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Uh, we, we practiced in her room, just a, literally she, creepily over her bed. She loved it, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, folks, everybody, uh, thank you so much, everybody who bought the NSFW show, our debut comedy album, uh, Night Attack, which is still the number one comedy album in all of Amazon MP3s and is a top 100 MP3 album all told. Uh, if you have not for some reason bought it, head on over there to Amazon. It's only $2, uh, or a buck ninety nine actually, and uh, and pick it up. Awesome. Uh, hey, do you have anything to promote, James? Is there anything that can make you a buck that we can that we can uh, swing some attention on? Uh, a, uh, I did a, a wonderful independent film with some friends of mine here in L.A. called Drones, which is a kind of office slash science fiction comedy, and it's been sh showing on Showtime, and I believe it will have a DVD release in the near future. So look for that. What's the and What's I the conceit of Drones? Uh, there's an alien invasion, and aliens have infiltrated. Earth and there and a man in a workplace discovers that his best friend is actually an alien, and uh, then there's a sort of interspecies romance that happens. And that yeah. happened to me once. Awesome, it's great. And uh, I will. Uh, speaking of Showtime, I'll be on uh, the new Showtime series Homeland. Oh, right on! Yeah. Oh, awesome! Show in like I think the week after next Sunday, episode five. I watched. I show up as a uh, a. A, a polygraph guy at the CIA, and your uh, your 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 Twitter is at James Urbaniak. Is that right? At James Urbaniak, correct. Urbaniak. I've been mispronouncing it is, yes, your name. It is. Yes, it's Ban, not Ban. Ban. Many say Ban. Yeah. Uh, thank you, boys, and uh, you guys. That Ban. You guys are awesome. I oh, love thank you, guys. you, sir. Thank you, sir. He yeah. likes the guy in the buffalo. If only. That, see, the thing that kills me is that there's only four guy in the buffaloes. Well, there's a you know secretly we. There's one thing that we didn't, you know, we have one coming out. I don't know if it's ready though. We only, we haven't finished the video for it. We've got the audio for the, you know, for the most of it. And I don't know if it's appropriate to leak it early. Have Wait a minute. Seen, Wait a minute. Can I ask you a question? Yes, have sir. Have you seen Buffalo Rider in its entirety? Uh, yes, I have finished? by accident. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about it until I saw, I was saying earlier, a friend of mine emailed me and said, I don't normally email links to things. Uh, I'm not your aunt. I don't do this, but right. this is worth it. And it was links to the uh, the Buffalo songs. Oh, thank you. That's that's <laughs> yeah. that's high praise. <laughs> yeah, no, we had to watch oh, it to get. Awesome. We had to watch it to you know get the right scenes and everything. And watch the entire movie yeah. somehow. So yeah, that's Actually, right. a friend of theirs watch watched it that, that and sang the song. <laughs> I paid I paid Hard someone work. to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so wait, hold on, wait, guys, pause and bossy. If I understand. There is a never before publicly heard on the internet a right. new yet unreleased guy on a buffalo song Correct. and you might be willing to play it here on this very show. What? I think uh you know here's the thing we have to keep it on on the down low. <laughs> keep it hush hush. Yeah, yeah, nobody certainly nobody cut this out and post it no. repeatedly on YouTube no, and tell everybody. No, don't do it. that. We're no. trying to keep it we don't you know, we don't like to promote the stuff we do. <laughs> And uh, especially, you know, this is it's this is a leak. It's highly confidential. Guys, all right, oh my God. I, I got I got the perfect out for you. Okay, you ready? I'm listening. Uh, being performed by Manuel, Consuelo, and Todd, three friends of the Possum Posse. Yeah. Allow me to present to you the unreleased fourth guy on a Buffalo song. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yes. Uh, fair enough. One 
One day the guy on the buffalo seen suspicious charges on his bank account. Hopped on the buffalo and went to the drive through teller's window. He says, what's up with these charges? The teller says, oh, that's for that credit monitoring service. You signed up for two months ago. He said, I thought that's free. She said, it is for two months unless you cancel. And you got to call in to do that or not over news. Guy on the buffalo. <laughs> I didn't want that service anyway. You tricked me. Oh, guy. Buffalo turd in the tube, hit sin, and just rolled away. All oh, that banks, you don't want to screw your customers over. Cause changing banks is not that hard these days. Especially when one of your customers is the guy on a buffalo. Yes, Manuel, Consuelo, and the rest. Uh, all right, guys, that is it for this episode of NSFW. Thank you so much to James Urbaniak, freaking best person who ever lived. Hooray for the Venture Brothers. Hooray for the Posse Posse. Really fun. It's In studio, you guys so are the best. Thanks, guys. I'm going to spend the rest of the week in bed until the next NSFW. The show is through and it breaks my heart Cause I just can't bear to be apart from Brian and Justin of NSFW Oh, I'd rather die in a fire Than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you Nuts to the buffalo! <laughs> NSFW I love you Oh god god stop We were tuning we So were tuning. yeah <laughs> so. Oh did I Oh sorry Brian you stepped on my read Go my for recoiling. it All right go ahead Uh we're going to play a song called All Right All uh, Right by mine all right, by mine? Yes, there's, by a, there's a long pause between all right and by mine. Oh, see, I screwed that up by talking. <laughs> all right, go for it. The you, know, like, like you said yes. it, Brian. Well, on the day that we met, on the internet, I asked her for a little photograph. She sent it on over to me, said, I know it's ugly. I said, girl, ugly ain't the half. Look at you. You got blue teeth and you only got two teeth, but I, I kind of like to see you smile. And it appears that over the years you've turned into a big old steaming pile and she said yeah well i know i ain't no supermodel i said you ain't a hand model baby but that's fine because you're pretty ugly by most people's standards hey, but you're all right by mine like Well, on our first date, I showed up right at eight. She came to the front door. I said, I'm going to wait right here while you go put on your makeup. She says, 
do I have to put on more? And I said, yeah, cause you got that one crazy eye and that one haste over lazy eye still. I kind of dig that ugly grin. Maybe it's your dermatitis or your gingivitis. Either way, none of my friends ever ask about your twin. She says, yeah, I know I ain't no supermodel. I said, I ain't gonna argue with that, baby, but that's fine. You're pretty dang ugly by most people's standards But you're all right by mine And maybe I never told her that she looked pretty But you can never say I lied Cause maybe she's ridiculously hideous to look at But that's just on the outside, yeah All oh, with her blue teeth and only having them two teeth. Well, I kind of dig that ugly grin. Even though she sort of looks like she fell off a dirt bike and landed right on her chin. Eight or nine times. She said, I know I ain't no supermodel. I said, funny when you compare yourself to a supermodel. Oh, that's fine. Cause you're pretty ugly by most people's standards. Hey, but you're all right by mine She said, yeah Well, I know I ain't no supermodel I said, what a ridiculous understatement But that's fine Cause you're pretty dang ugly By most people's standards Hey, but you're all right by, yeah You're all right by You're all right by You're all right by Fantastic. Uh, dude, uh, you guys were freaking epic. That was amazing and awesome. Um, I, I guess I, I I feel like we should wrap up, but I don't want to. I want to just sit here and play around all we night. We can smash but... our guitars or something. Uh, please don't. Because <laughs> yes. then it'll be a Kickstarter. Okay. We're like, we want new guitars. We went on an yeah. SFW show. It cost us money. Yeah, that's a good point. That's actually pretty, pretty smart. <laughs> awesome.